we are in the next video now i left that uh, this is still on overexposure here so we'll, we'll still be looking at that overexposed image but here's how we left it in the last video we had an adjustment layer that we'd used and, and this is the panel where you can access adjustment layers and we'd created a brightness contrast adjustment layer and i can switch that the visibility of that layer off to, to go back to where the original image is uh, or switch it back on again to see the difference it's made and, and we can quickly see how that's been impacted now while we're in these adjustment layers i'm going to switch this one off again and i'm going to create another one here um, using a different adjustment so let's have a look and see what we can do with levels with the adjustments now what levels does is it brings up the same histogram that we've got on our histogram panel there and it shows us um, that we can make adjustments with sliders out of the side here and, and uh, again it's showing that that we've got that uh, pretty chronic clipping up here uh, again it's got the automatic adjustment or we've got also got some presets now let's just um, go to this little icon here and click on there just to get that histogram up to date so that it's um, fully loaded with what we're expecting let's have a look at these defaults here now that we can make it darker immediately just by clicking darker and you can see what that does or we can go to midtones darker and see what that does and that actually doesn't do, do too bad a job um, or we can actually go to the automatic settings again now this will take a little while to to render because it's uh, oh that was pretty quick uh, and again that hasn't done too bad a job um, and the other things we can do i'll just reset that so with the contextual menu here or actually i can go back here to reset it i do believe so that's back to where it was to begin with now one of the interesting things you can do with these adjustment levels is um, i can hold down my alt key on the pc uh, that's your option key on the mac and if i click on that adjustment level with the alt key held down as i shift this slider to the right you can start to see where the darker parts of the image are so if i shift it till, till i just see the color starting to come in then i know that that's the darkest tones in the image and i'll let go there and then similarly if i get the other end of the scale but right at the very beginning of this end of the scale you can see that um, we're already getting parts of the image coming up and that's because it's clipped so we really don't want to move that at all in, in any direction and then um, with, with you don't bother holding down the alt key or the option key for the midtones we can just adjust the slider in the middle there and and you can see that that's shifting where the midtones um, are going to be arranged around and you, again as you move that just look how that uh, the histogram is changing over on the right hand side there in the histogram panel as I, I move that you can see how we can shift the emphasis of the tones or the, the distribution of the tones in the image um, so again i'll just put the automatic one on there and then i'll minimize that and i'll switch off my levels and now we'll, the third one we can go to here is curves and this is one that a lot of professionals like to use so the curves again we have presets so we can go in here for um, strong contrast or we can go in for um, medium contrast we can go for darker rgb <coughs> and and notice how this curve uh, uh, reacts on the histogram here again i should just click this to to reset that histogram um, I can interestingly here I can use the automatic one again and it does a pretty good job it's putting these little points in here and any of these points I can click and drag to again modif dramatically modify the image so as I pull these points around you can see what's happening it, it's actually changing the curve um, I can actually draw a curve with this pen tool so if I wanted to draw my curve there um, it'll follow the curve and then I can smooth it with this tool and I, the more I click this the more it's going to smooth that out um, I'll, I'll go back to the default settings so I'll go to my cont contextual menu actually I'll use the the little icon on the bottom here to go go back to the defaults 
and this time um, if I go back to my curve again here and click on auto and um, and we'll leave it at that I think so we'll maybe just make a very slight adjustment here actually if, I, if I've got that uh, if I've got the curve set like that I can actually use this tool here to move individual area so as I drag this around you can see that's impacting on that particular area of the image and that's uh, working on the the river there this is going to be working on the rocks here and so you can really <laughs> fiddle around with certain areas of the image again here I could work on the beach area uh, yeah a very interesting way of working again I'll just switch it back to automatic and and um, the, the other choices we've got here are exposure so I'll switch this curves one off and I'll go back to my main image again here and let's see what exposure does now again here we've got some defaults and we can say we know this is one stop over so if we go minus one it should bring it back to normal but you can see it's a kind of muddy uh, way of doing it so so really some of the other corrections are going to be better I'm going to minimize this just have another quick look at these different ones so all of these are still there I can switch any of them on I'll switch off exposure switch on levels that was what that did switch on curves that's what that did and switch on brightness contrast and that's what that did and you can choose which one you think is going to be the most effective way of dealing with this for your photographs if you've got an image that you need to do a bit of fixing up and um, and again this is totally non-destructive when you're working with these adjustment layers so as long as we save it as a PSD or a Photoshop document it'll retain the original image exactly the way you had it to begin with. That'll be the end of that video.